Hi and welcome to the Monday Live recorded. Yes, I'm not with you live uh, today. I'm down in Two Bridges, or at least making my way there, down to the middle of Devon and Dartmoor. And in fact, slightly disturbed for a couple of weeks, I'm doing Monday to Wednesday events, both this week and next week. So the Teams events are on Thursday night. For those of you who want to join me, I was a member or as a non-member, you can buy them. Sometimes we have special offers, so look out for those. Um, and the Fridays are as normal for the members. Those are at 11 as usual. We're doing defence. But the Mondays, well, today, as you can see, is recorded. Next Monday, I will do live, but it will be at 9 o'clock. Um, so you can watch it any time, of course. But because I'm going up to the Old Barn in Grantham next week, for Monday to Wednesday, I um, I can fit it in at nine o'clock. Unfortunately for the Devon one this week, I, I can't fit it in because it takes me a bit longer to get there. But hopefully not too much disturbance, but sorry for it, it, for it if it's affected you. Um, what are we doing? We're doing finessing on the site this month. So as usual, I touch a little on, on, the, on the Monday Lives. If you want to see the full seminar, come on to the site, uh, become a member or as a member, obviously you can watch it and try to play the set hands too. So we've got finessing um, on Fridays, as I say, second hand as defender. So of course the expression is sec second hand low, Unfortunately, we're making our way through the exceptions and it's a big forest of exceptions. Even though I always say there's very few, there are probably proportionally, but the few that there are can be quite subtle and quite tricky. Lots of events uh, going on now, obviously, but also coming up the festive season's approaching. So look out for that. Um, we, um, we've also got the one after Oh, but let me just show you, there's the festive season there um, at Denham. We do it. I love doing the Twixmas and the New Year there. We've also got a New Year at the Old Barn. And then afterwards we go and do the Reboot Your Conventions. We have some fun there. That's all the, all the conventions, the most important conventions you need to know. We, we look at them again, make sure you're happy with them and go over them. Six seminars and set hands. So really intensive, but worthwhile. And most people seem to enjoy it, although they often go home with a sore head. Um, and the Isle of Wight and Cornwall. I wanted to mention Cornwall because of course that's with Cornwall discovered and it's becoming a nice annual trip for me in March to the Falmouth Hotel right on the seafront and of course the tours were included so it's a slightly different event. Um, so do think about that one. Um, in fact, it reminds me of both Cornwall on the seafront and Falmouth, uh, sorry, and the Isle of Wight on the seafront. Um, lovely, lovely venues, uh, as opposed to uh, two bridges where I am at the moment in the middle of Dartmoor. But lovely in its own way, I must say. So, um, what do I usually start with? If I remember, I think I start with this, which is the hangover from the Friday, isn't it? Okay, so that is, um, this is the five level decision. Let's see what happens. Well, with the opening bidder, when we open a club, that's nice and simple. It then goes a heart from your partner, and then there's a spade over call. So things started quietly. At this point, you could bid two clubs, but given that it's going to be a competitive auction, I think two hearts is a reasonable bid here. Yes, your partner might only have four, but in a competitive auction, showing some semblance of support, I think is important. The bidding then accelerates. It goes two spades, four hearts, four spades, and it's your bid. Okay, so a club for you, pass a heart, a spade, you bid two hearts, if they get two spades, four hearts, four spades, and it's over to you at the five level. Are you passing, are you doubling, or are you bidding on? Okay, so we will come back to that after the seminar. Okay, after the seminar. 
In terms of overseas, just a quick mention of those before we go on to our seminar. You've got the normal cruises on the Balmoral, one there, again to the Canaries, both in November and, of course, after the new year, our traditional ones. And as usual, you've got one of our varied hotel events, whether it's Croatia, Mallorca or Tunisia, where I'm going next year in March, April time, around Easter time there. Um, and it should be lovely. OK, so. What do I have to do? I have to press the right button. There we go. We're off to finessing land. And of course, don't forget we're finessing with the beginners as well in a slightly simpler form because we are going to look at that dreaded restricted choice. I've done it on the site before. I've talked about it many a times. I'll do it again here. It's in the seminar. And then I'll show you a subtler example, a more subtle example. So. If you are missing two high cards and one falls under the play of your even higher cards, do you play that person to have two honours or do you play them to have a singleton honour? It's particularly relevant when you've got a nine card holding with the ace king and you are missing the queen jack. When you catch the ace and the jack falls underneath it, do you think it's a queen jack doubleton? or Jack Singleton. And you can play two ways, you see, because if you play the Jack to be a Singleton, you might be able to finesse for the Queen. Does that make sense? And generally the experts say, in fact, the mathematicians suggest, um, you should play that honor to be a Singleton. The reason being, I'll try to explain it in, in layman's terms, the reason being that any player with a Queen Jack Doubleton can play that doubleton in two different ways. Jack followed by queen or queen followed by jack. And if they, once you've seen their first card, then they only half of those exist, if that makes sense. If they've played the jack, well, they can't have played queen followed by jack because they didn't, they played the jack first. Mm. Let's, try and, let's try and put that down. So the ace of spades is led and the jack falls, okay? So there's only two cards left here, the Queen and the Four of Spades. Do, does South have both of them, or does North have, did North start with the Queen Jack Doubleton? Tricky. Okay, so you've got to guess in a way. The mathematicians say you don't really have to guess, because they feel it's much, much more likely that South has Queen 4-2 and North started with the Jack Singleton. When you've got a 1-1 break, well, there's only two cards left here, the, the, a 1-1 one, one break and, and a 2 nil break are quite similar in value here. So South holding the Queen 4 and South holding the 4 and North holding the Queen, similar. Bear in mind that if, if, it's, if the suit breaks 2-2 two, two and, and, and the Queen is with the South hand, both, both methods are going to work. So don't feel if, if North's playing Jack Doubleton, for example, it makes no difference to the equation at all here. If North plays from Queen Jack four, it's just an order play and we can't we can't make a trick. So the only ones that are relevant here are Jack Queen or Jack by itself. So <clears throat> if if I say that the two options are equal, I could just put two of them up there. But I've decided to put four of them up here to try and explain what what the mathematicians mean. So let's give each of these chances a quarter. A quarter of the time, each of those will turn up. And in fact, so that means half the time you get the 3-1 break and half the time you get the 2-2 two, two break. However, I'm hoping you notice the 2-2-2 two, two, the two, two, two breaks are subtly different. One of them has the queen followed by the jack and the other one has the jack played first. And what's important is that once we've seen the jack played first, the other, the other layout doesn't count anymore because it doesn't exist. <laughs> OK, so assuming your opponent is equally likely to play jack or queen, then that one doesn't exist. So suddenly it's two to one on the jack being singleton. OK. You don't have to follow it. Whether or not you think that's a good explanation is another matter. But the key is, is the mathematician suggests you should finesse for the Queen. And it won't always work. 
but they believe it'll work much more often than not. Okay, so let's do it. What we are gonna say, the ace drops the jack, so we are gonna cross over to the east hand and then finesse south for the queen. Okay, now, obviously, the queen might appear in the north hand, but not today. It's the five of diamonds discard. And of course, all that South has left now is the Queen of Spades, so we drop that. So we make all of the tricks in the suit. It's it's tricky. It doesn't come up that often. This is by far the most common situation, this particular situation. But what I will do is give you a little test to see how we get on with this. So this is our hand for the uh, for this kind of seminar that I've put in. See how we get on with it. We are in three no trumps. We are in three no trumps and you get the Queen of Hearts lead. I'm going to let you have a little think about that while I just set up my uh, configuration to show this on um, on the Q plus because it's slightly easier to play a full hand out. So um, remember count your top tricks and then make a plan and what you're probably thinking you're probably wondering why on earth is this in a finessing seminar? Okay because it does it does appear weird that I would have it in it but let's work out why. Okay, so the Queen of Hearts is led. You've got nine top tricks. I hope you can see that. Ace, King, Queen of Spades, because you've only got three of them. Ace, King, Queen of Diamonds. Ace, Ace, and King. So you have nine tricks off the top, so don't feel that making three no trumps is going to get you a huge round of applause here. However, we would like to make more. And clubs will take maybe a little bit too long. The chances are your opponents will probably... Um, have established their hearts by then. So diamonds look obvious. So where is the finesse? Well, you are missing the jack 10 nine of diamonds. So let's see what happens. I'm going to take you to the Q plus screen here. Okay. And I've already done the bidding. Two no trumps, three no trumps. The queen of hearts is led. I'm not going to duck because in theory they, they, they may have a four card club suit that they can attack. So I'm going to win the first one. I've got plenty of entries in the West Hand, so I'll take it with the Ace. And I then play the Ace of Diamonds, followed by the King of Diamonds. There you go. Now, hopefully you've seen North's plays. And North has played the nine of diamonds, then the ten of diamonds. And we're in a similar situation to that which we have just seen. There are two diamonds missing. The jack and the seven. The jack and the seven. So, does North have the jack? Or does South have the Jack-7? So what I'm asking myself did is, did North start with the Jack-10-9 Tripleton? Or did North have the 10-9 Doubleton? Now, clearly North could also have 10-9-7 if he chose to play it that way. But then our quick, when we lead the Six of Diamonds, the Jack will be played by South. And if North started with Jack-10-9-7, well, there's nothing we can do about it. The most well, the only really relevant holding is whether North started with Jack 10-9 or 10-9. Now with the Jack 10-9, North could have played those cards in any order. Clearly they're all equal. He might start with the Jack. He might start with the 10. He might play the nine followed by the jack. Can you see that? He specifically played nine, ten. So none of the other holdings count. Does, does that make sense? So he is mu a much bigger favorite to hold the ten, nine, doubleton than he is to hold jack, ten, nine. And therefore, I am going to cross over to the east hand 
and I am going to take a diamond finesse. Now, you might choose to play a few more cards out to get a few more clues. You never know, I suppose. Uh, if you'd played a couple of spades, North might discard, and you'll find South's got six of them. Okay. However, we're taking the finesse, and it works. Okay. Okay, and now we'd play um, maybe the Queen of Diamonds. And you'd see if, I mean, you, you might as well duck a club, I guess, and see if they, but once they play a heart, you, you're just going to take your tricks and run for home, okay? And you're very happy to have made an over trick. There we go. So you've made three no trumps plus one by picking up the diamonds. You can see the layout of the diamonds there, okay? And for me, um, it's a really important, um, well, not really important, it's just another example of the principle of restricted choice. Um, the, key, the key being that if the jack had been in the north hand, he'd have had jack 10, 9, and he might have played the 9 first, the 10 first, the jack first, or the, he could have played them in any order, but he chose to play 9 followed by 10. Okay, clearly, a 5-1 break is much less usual, so, you know, um, uh, North, and also bear in mind North might have had 9-jack and wouldn't have wanted to play the jack first. So you can't apply the principle of restricted choice on the first round, but once it's gone 9-10, there is no doubt that you can apply it then. So I hope you enjoyed that little foray into the principle of restricted choice. Uh, not an easy realm to be in. Um, and to, I just have to quickly change. Um, not an easy place to, to be. And if you don't like mathematics or that, that element of logic that we've just seen, I can completely understand that. Um, what I suggest to you in those situations is, is to trust, trust what the experts say. Um, and, uh, you know, you can always do your own research, I suppose, uh, and, and see. Anyway, let's, let's go to that five level decision. Here we are, uh, we're going back to it. You opened a club, it went past one heart, one spade, two hearts from you, which I think is a nice bid. I mean, you could contemplate double in that situation, and some people play specifically something called a support double. Uh, slightly more advanced bridge, really. I'm not sure I'd recommend it either, but that would promise three hearts and nothing else. But generally, the double is played as a sort of takeout, um, and you'd feel that that would suggest maybe three diamonds as well here. Um, Two clubs is an option, but I, in competitive auctions, I love bidding two hearts here. Because if you bid two clubs here over two spades, West might have problems. Anyway, here we are. It's gone two spades, four hearts, four spades. And it's your choice. Well, you're pretty balanced. You've got nothing extra to show. And more, most importantly, one of the main tenets of bidding at the five level is, is simple. If you've got a double fit, bid on. Well, you're not the one who knows. It's all about what your partner's club holding is. If your partner has ace, ace jack to five, you know, five or six hearts and maybe king queen to three clubs, you know, with a singleton or, or another ace or something, he's going to go on thinking, wow, we've got a massive double fit. Let's go for it. Whereas if he's sitting with rubbish in clubs, he's going to think, well, shall I, shan't I, if that makes sense. So... To be honest, for me, it's a pass. It's definitely not a double. Double says, partner, I don't want you to bid on. Here, I've bid my both my suits. So my pass is simply saying, partner, it's your choice. I believe this is a forcing pass situation. I think partner has bid to make game. <clears throat> so therefore, um, we think our opponents are sacrificing. So I don't want to really play in four spades doubled. OK, let's open up the hands and see how it might progress. It's going to go pass from us, pass from south. West has made a relatively aggressive four heart bid with six hearts and two aces. I think it's reasonable. He has no fit for our first suit 
and clearly with two aces he's very happy with his defensive strength so he doubles not going on to five okay is that a good decision well i'm not sure if i'm honest i'm not sure that four spades is making a uh, four hearts is making it's pretty close it's not an easy defense to get right necessarily um because de Clara can try to establish his clubs here um, so maybe the defenders might would need to defeat four hearts. I think it, it would need to go ace of spades, queen of spades dropped under, spade to the jack, diamond switch. Um, and then, then you do make two spades, a diamond and a club. But if you don't, if it just goes ace king of spades, then I'm not sure you can get your diamond trick because uh, De Clare will duck a club and establish the clubs maybe um, and then hopefully go back over. It's, it's, it's a tricky, tricky hand, but I think De Clare has got chances in four hearts. However, no chance in five hearts. I hope you can see that. No chance in five hearts at all. Four spades. It's tight. It's tight, but surely De Clare is losing two diamonds, um, a club and a heart. So he's going one off. So it's a good sacrifice if four hearts makes. And I think four hearts will mostly make. But it's important that we don't bid five hearts. And that's the crucial element here. If we've got a double fit, by all means go. If we've got super strength, by all means go. You have no idea which of those is present here. And in fact, the hand turns out to be 20-20. So it's quite tight. Anyway, enjoyed that one. Um, and hope you enjoyed the, summer, the, the talk as a whole. Um, I'm going to finish with the bidding quiz. Of course, we've been on a theme. Let's continue that theme. So once again, you've opened a club. You've opened a club. Pass from north. One heart from your partner. And then this two diamond overcall. Um, we've had a few of those for the last few bidding quizzes. Nobody's vulnerable. You've opened a club. Partner's bid a heart. And then there's a two diamond overcall and it's your bid. Don't forget, you can get the answer on the website, whether a member or not. Um, and please look around, look at the website, look at the holiday site um, and, uh, and, uh, and do send me emails. Always interested. Give me examples of finesses you've not come before, come across before. Um, and, uh, and send in any hands you like. I'm always and, and any queries you've got. It's always interesting to have them. So that's, that's that for the week. I'm going to visit the beginners again, or at least uh, have a chat with them. Hopefully see you throughout the week if you're one of the members on the site, or if you're not, why not? Join me and come and see me, or pay to come and see the teams if you wish, or the Friday Live as well. You're welcome to join us. Um, don't forget, though, the programme is slightly different this week and next week. So Thursday night for the teams, Friday as usual. Next Monday, I am live at nine so that I can go off to my event. So it's live at nine, but remember, you can watch it any time you wish. And again, next week, the teams are Thursday as well. So sorry for that disturbance, but hopefully you will forgive me. So goodbye to you and welcome to the beginners. Here we go. So what we're looking at is we're still on the basics of Declare Play. And what I want to do now is give you a test. I'm going to give you a little test. So here is a hand. We're not going to make a plan on the hand. I just want you to look at each individual suit and answer two questions for me. I should say it's no trumps we're playing in here. So I want you to look at each individual suit in turn and answer two questions. Which way should you lead the suit to give you the best chance to make an extra trick or tricks? Okay, so which way should you lead the suit? And who do you want to hold which card? So, i.e., which card do you feel is important in each suit, and which opponent would you like to hold that card? I, for the finesse to work, for you to gain a trick, who would you like to hold the missing card? Okay, so those are the questions, and let's go through it ha uh, suit by suit. Excuse me while I have a sip of water there. 
Okay, let's look at spades. So the ace is unbeatable. You can lead the ace out if you want. You can lead towards the ace. It makes no difference. The ace just wins. But the queen is certainly beatable. If you lead the queen, the king can crush it. And then all we'll do is make the ace. So I want somehow to give my queen the chance of making. Leading the queen doesn't make sense. Leading away from the queen, well, you could lead towards the ace, that's a different matter. But on the next round, what would you do? I want you to lead towards your beatable high card. So as I say, the ace isn't important, it's the queen that's important. I am going to lead towards the queen. So that means from the hand on your left, from de Clara, towards the dummy hand on your right. And I am hoping that north has the king. So let's show you what I mean. So this is what I'm hoping for. I am leading from the hand on your left. North has to play second. If he plays the king, he wins the king. But my queen will make a trick. Can you see that? If he plays low, I play the queen and it makes. So I'm hoping that North holds the king. If South has the king, he will kill my queen, but he will kill it whatever I do. If I lead the queen, he kills it. If I lead towards the queen, he kills it. However, North can only kill the queen if I lead it. If I lead towards the queen, there is nothing that North can do. Okay, my ace and queen will make. Okay, so what about hearts? I tell you what, we'll go through the other three suits and then I'll visit them. In hearts, it is very similar. We are leading towards our high cards. So if I lead the six of hearts from the hand on the all right, that gives the opponents the chance to make the nine. <laughs> Because we've got no other high cards. Remember, we, once we've played from the right hand, we can't play again. So the six of hearts would, will be easily won by your opponents with the nine or the ten. If we lead the king, well, the ace will kill it. How about if we lead from the hand on the left again? Low towards the king. Well, if south has the ace, he just kills the, your king. But what if north has the ace? You lead low if North plays the ace, you can follow low, and you've still got your king and queen. And of course, if North plays small, you play the king and win. What's important is you need to do that twice. So you lead towards your king, and if it wins, you would cross back over at some point and then lead towards your queen. And there's nothing North can do to stop you making those, as we'll see when we see the full layout. Now, diamonds is perhaps the trickiest one here. All of the other suits are leading towards high cards to give them power. The only time you generally don't do that is if you have a lot of high cards. And here we have ace, queen, jack, ten. We can afford to waste one of those. Imagine if I said to you, look, will you trade one of your high cards on the right if I throw away my king? So let's say you throw the queen of diamonds and I throw the king of diamonds away. The opponents throw the queen. Well, you'd be very happy. You'd be left with the ace, jack and ten and the other two would have gone. So that would be three tricks. So you can afford to waste one. And if you can afford to waste one, you, you, you lead it and your plan is to try and crush the missing card. So therefore, I am leading the queen towards the ace. And if South has the king, there's nothing that he can do. If he covers the queen with the king, we kill it with the ace and we've still got the jack and ten left. In much as I've said, the king and queen have been tossed away. If he doesn't cover it, the queen would win. So I'm going to lead the queen towards the ace. So I'm trying to pin the missing card because of my power. If I take the jack and ten of diamonds and make it the eight and four, then we have the spade suit. Can you see that? So it's very different to the spade suit. Because I have the queen jack ten, I am prepared to waste the queen. In, in search of killing the king. So in spades we led towards the queen, in diamonds we can afford to lead the queen. Really tricky that. 
try and get your head around it. And of course in clubs, we've only got one high card, we must lead towards it. So I'm leading from the right hand, from dummy towards the king. What do I want? I want self to hold the ace. And if self holds the ace, if he plays it, I can play low. If he ducks, my king will win. So let's go through those. We've already been through this spade suit. So let's go to the heart suit. This is the holding we're hoping. We're hoping that north has the ace. We lead towards our king of hearts. So we lead the three of hearts towards the king. If north plays the ace, well, that's brilliant. Our king and queen will make. In fact, we'll make king, queen and the last heart. More likely north will duck. So it'll go small, small. Our king will win. Once you've won the king, you make the effort to cross back over and lead another heart. And there's nothing that North can do. He's playing before you. By leading towards your king, queen holding, you force North to play before you. OK, so you lead towards the king, queen. And you're hoping that North has the ace. Remember, it's only a 50-50 shot. All of these finesses are, or all of these leading towards high cards are. If South had had the ace, your king would have lost to the ace and you'd only make the queen. You're giving yourself a 50-50 chance of an extra trick. In diamonds, this is the one that was different. You had queen, jack, 10. So you were able to contemplate leading the queen, allowing them to kill it. I only sacrifice an honor like that if I've got backup. So I lead the queen and if south covers with the king, our ace wins and we make the jack 10. We saw this suit last week, hence I'm not going through the suits. We've seen all of the suits that I'm showing you here, okay, and we've seen them played through. What I wanted to do was test you to make sure you were taking some of it in. And if you take it all in, well done. This is not easy stuff for beginners. It really is not. Okay, so we're leading towards the ace. We're leading the queen or jack or ten. Bear in mind they're all the same. I should say that. I tend to lead the queen because it encourages the king to kill it. Okay, as we'll see when we talk about defence. Um, but you could have led the jack or the ten. They're, they're the same difference, of course, because, because they're touching, they are equivalent. You're hoping, of course, that south has the king. North might have, might have had the king. But of course, he's going to make that king. You know, if you play the ace, he just plays small and wins the king later. So we're giving ourselves a 50-50 chance. And the last holding, of course, was this bear king. And once again, we were leading towards the high card. This time, of course, I've switched the, the hands. So we would lead from the hand on the right, the east hand. And we are hoping that south has the ace. And as you can see here, that's the case. So we would lead a small one. If south plays the ace, we play small and our king makes later. The problem that South has, though, is if he plays the jack or queen, we can win it with the king. And because South has the ace, we make our king. OK, you lead towards the king. So I hope you enjoyed those tests. Um, we've been through the types of suits, all, all of them. Um, these come up every hand. So these ideas come up every single hand. Clearly, you won't have a finesse or lead up situation in every suit, but you'll almost always have one in one of the suits. And sometimes you can have them in every single suit and they are difficult to analyze at times. And as experts will tell you, if you've got them in every single suit, you have to time your plays. You've got to choose which one to play first and work out which hand you want to be in at any given time. Because as you've seen with those sets of, so those sets of suits, each one needed to be led from a particular hand. So what, what I've been talking to the experts about when I've been talking about finessing is the idea of planning and working out which hand to be in when I play a suit. And that comes with practice. OK, but if you are able, if you were able to analyze each of those suits and work out the way, the correct way to play them, then you are making, you know, that is a great place to be because that means you are very much understanding the basics of declare play. I hope you enjoyed that and see you again next week. Thank you.